Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played in 2012. It's the second round of a very strong tournament, uh, at the fifth Grand Slam Chess Final. It was played, uh, half of the tournament was uh, held in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, and half of the tournament in Bilbao, in Spain. And, uh, uh, well, uh, you guys have uh, requested this game for quite some time now, and I thought, okay, tomorrow the World Cup is starting, uh, I, I have no idea what to show, uh, you, you guys suggest so much, uh, so I thought, okay, let's, uh, this one I've been uh, postponing for a very long time, and it's, um, it's younger Magnus, so uh, pre-World Championship era Magnus, it's 2012, Magnus uh, defeated Vishwanath Anand in 2013 uh, to win his World Chess Championship title, uh, but you can see how uh, easily he he will uh, make this game look, uh, even though, you know, the, the queens get traded off right away, and it's a very short game, uh, but just the end game is by far superior. And how you can't just play normal moves and uh, think you will you will uh, achieve something with white. So that being said, uh, let's check it out. Uh, we have pawn to e4. His opponent is the very strong uh, Francisco uh, Vallejo Pons, uh, also uh, goes by Paco Vallejo. Uh, we have d6, d4, and now knight to f6. Magnus goes for the Pierce defense. We have knight to c3 and pawn to e5. And usually knight to f3 is what is played here. But here we have d captures on e5. Going for the early queen trade. D captures, queen captures on d8 and king captures. And now uh, today bishop to c4 if this is even played and bishop to g5 are the main moves. But here we have knight to f3. Uh, and the bishop to d6. We have bishop to g5, bishop to e6, and now queenside castle. So white has very, very uh, natural development, uh, but you don't really gain all that much. Yes, Magnus um, uh, cannot castle, but he doesn't want to. His king will be perfectly fine in the center of the board. Knight to d7, and now knight to b5. Going after the bishop pair, Magnus says, all right, king e7, knight captures c, captures, and now bishop to b5. So now uh, Magnus uh, lost the bishop pair, but uh, what what can uh, what can uh, Paco do with with his bishop pair? We have rook h to d8, uh, and it is now as of move 11 that this position has never been reached again. So now it is a completely unique game. Uh, of course, you know that h6 is coming. Uh, the only reason Magnus cannot capture on e4 is because the knight is pinned. So he will of course play h6 g5, kick away the bishop, and then win the e4 pawn. So uh, Paco needs to defend the pawn. Knight to d2. He wants to further strengthen the center with pawn to f3, and Magnus starts uh, chasing away the bishop h6, bishop to h4, and pawn to g5. We have bishop to g3, and pawn to a6, kicking away the other bishop as well. Uh, and here you could play something like bishop d2, uh, but he decides for bishop captures on d7. So pretty much just trading uh, all the pieces. We have rook captures on d7 and pawn to f3. This uh, 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 strengthens the d4 pawn, and now you don't have to keep your knight on d2. We have rook to c8, and now king to b1. Makes sense, as the rook is on the c file. Uh, knight to h5. And while you could play something like bishop to f2, uh, then the knight comes to f4, attacks the g2 pawn, you have to push it. Then you go here, attack the bishop, and uh, uh, black's moves are, are you know, just uh, very, very natural and come very quickly. So instead, uh, Francisco played uh, knight to f1, and now Magnus goes pawn to f5. We have e captures on f5. Bishop captures, now putting pressure on that c2 pawn, and you have to defend it. Knight to e3, attacks and defends. Uh, bishop to g6, and now rook to d2, adding another defender to the c2 pawn. We have king to e6, and now pawn to b3, uh, trying to get the king to b2, so you can advance the pawn to c4, and Magnus, of course, stops this with pawn to b5. Now he has very nice control over the c4 square, and even though uh, Paco does have control over the d5 square, it's not really uh, any, any kind of control so king b2 and magnus immediately advances it to d5 so you can see how magnus didn't really do anything here in this game he pretty much played all the forced moves he played uh, whatever he could as uh, uh paco uh, forced all of the lines and he now has a, a superior end game the material is equally as but look at magnus's central control here and we all know uh, the old thing in chess, as it goes, he who controls the center will be victorious in the end. Uh, rook to e1, and now Magnus goes knight captures on g3. Um, it makes sense as the e5 pawn could uh, come under fire. So knight captures, h captures, and now beautiful move pawn to h5. And now, uh, okay, again, material is equal. Um, uh, Francisco's uh, pawns are doubled here on the g file, and we have pawn to c3 now, stopping any b4 or d4 ideas, but not really. Pawn to d4, c captures on d4, and now rook captures. This is the 
uh, correct way to capture if you capture right away uh, then this uh, will be a problem knight to g4 will win the game for white you will either have to go in front of the pawn or you go up the board and knight to e5 check picks up the rook or you go here and then it's a nice mate in one so you don't want to do that uh, but Magnus plays it correctly. He plays C captures uh, first rook captures on d4, and after rook captures, only now E captures on d4. And it seems like uh, uh, you still have some discoveries, uh, they're just not as potent. So knight to c2 with check, king to d5, and now knight to b4 with check. And Magnus goes king to d6. Of course, king to c5 would be a terrible mistake. Rook to c1 would pick up the rook on c8. So king to d6, and now comes rook to c1. With rook to d1, uh, you can still fight, but after rook to c1, uh, it's a very, uh, very instructive how Magnus uh, completely takes over the game. Rook captures on c1, king captures captures and now what do you think Magnus played here? I'm not going to ask you to pause the video because I have a different move where I will ask you to pause the video. He played pawn to h4 and what does this uh, move on the other side of the board uh, do? Well, it uh, uh, paralyzes the g2 pawn and Magnus wants this pawn stuck here on the light square. So now, okay, you, you should play something like knight back to c2 and try to hold the position. Uh, but uh, Francisco tried to grab a pawn, g captures, g captures and now knight captures on a6. So now he's up a pawn. The problem is there's no way to guard g2 bishop to d3 now bishop to f1 will be played and you cannot capture the pawn that's why this h4 move was uh so so strong knight back to b4 now he also wants to play a4 create a pass pawn on the queen side and advance his own pawn to victory the problem is magnus will have two uh pass pawns the d pawn and the h pawn so bishop back to f1 King to d2 and bishop captures on g2. We have king to e2 defending the f3 pawn. But now feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that wins the game for Magnus uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to h3. That's the only move, and I'm sure you guys figured it out, uh, so congratulations. Uh, the way you figure it out is that, of course, you want to start advancing your pass pawn, but if you play h3 after king to f2, uh, there is no way to continue advancing your pass pawn. So after this king to e2... Sorry about that. After this king to e2, bishop to h3, and that's pretty much it. a4 was played, uh, bishop to f5, and now a captures um, on b5, grabbing the pawn, but now d3 check. Of course, you cannot trade because captures, 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 and then the king is too far away to stop the past h pawn. So king to e3 was played. We have h3, and now knight captures on d3. Bishop captures, and he was in this position on move 41 that Magnus Carlsen, uh, <laughs> not Magnus Carlsen, that Francisco uh, Vallejo Pons resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, for those of you who enjoyed when I uh, finished the games, uh, the reason is after you play anything, uh, the pawns will just quickly come off the board after you, the king attacks the pawn, the bishop will defend it, and now the black king will simply pick up this pawn, then pick up this pawn, and that's pretty much it. You can... Uh, we can fast forward to that. At some point, the white king will have will be forced into the corner. You will waste a move with something like bishop to g4, and after king to g1, h2 check, king h1, and bishop to f3 will be checkmate. So there you have it. Of course, uh, both of them knew this, and he resigned here, and a very nice victory for Magnus Carlsen. So you see, you can't just play anything, even though the moves are fine by the engine. Uh, it's just not very. It, 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 it's uh, it, it, nothing good happens if you try to play uh, for a draw with the white pieces. Even though it's a pre-world championship, Magnus Carlsen, you can see that he took advantage of it, and that there there was absolutely nothing you could do there. And regarding the standings, uh, these, sorry, not these, uh, let me just uh, fix that. Uh, regarding the standings, uh, it was, a, as it was a, a six player double round robin, uh, Magnus uh, was tied in the end with Fabiana Coruana. Uh, there we have it, uh, I know I have them somewhere. Yeah, uh, he was tied in the end with Fabiano Coruana. Uh, he went into tie breaks and then he defeated Fabi both of the games. Um, uh, they played in the uh, tie breaks. Uh, but yeah, and also it was a, you can see that special scoring was in effect th uh, three points per win and only one point per draw. Uh, and they, they had the same four wins, one draw, and um, uh, no, four wins, uh, one loss, and five draws. Then you had Levon in third, Sergei Karyakin in fourth, Shwana Tanan in fifth, and uh, 
uh, Paco Ejo in, in sixth place. But yeah, uh, very, very instructive. And that's why when you, even even though if you're playing against a stronger opponent or I don't know if um, Francisco considered Magnus to be a stronger opponent, then probably he did as there was quite a bit of a, uh, a rating difference. As you can see, those were those are the actual ratings. I uh, found them uh, online, 2697 to Magnus is 2843. So uh, definitely a huge difference. But yeah, you, you just don't to go for this queen trade and try to push for something it's uh uh not definitely not the way to go and don't try that in your own games uh but yeah very nicely very nicely done by magnus and uh yeah i really really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, i would like to thank christoph mark the animated chemist um, an anonymous person uh, old games are best and len herbert for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon uh, starting tomorrow the world cup um, uh, will take place so if you guys have any favorite games do you use hashtag suggestion uh, and i will definitely go over them uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day